A few people had asked whether I could show a video of the assembly of a Speedwino board. So today I'm going to be putting together a V0.3 board. Uh, everything I show here probably uh, goes the same for a V0.4 board if you're working with one of those as well. Okay, so the things you're going to need are soldering iron and some solder. Um, for what it's worth, I'm using 0.7mm solder. You can also use 1mm probably uh, without any problems. Uh, a pair of clippers, uh, bigger ones will work if you if that's all you have. Uh, Speedwino board, obviously. Uh, now I'm using a board holder, which you can get fairly cheaply off eBay. Uh, they do make life a lot simpler. Um, and you can position the board anywhere you want, but it's, it's not crucial. Uh, digital multimeter for testing. The parts kit here. And the bill of materials, which is also our reference for uh, which part goes where. So, the first thing in assembly is we start with the resistors. Uh, the easiest way to fit these is to simply bend the legs. Look up which resistor we have. In this case, it's a 1K resistor. Uh, now, there's quite a few of these. Place these into the board on the back side. Bend the legs over to hold it in place. And you then have easy access to solder it in place. Okay, so I'm going to work through all the resistors on the board first, um, and then we'll move on to the other components. Okay, so with all our resistors in place, the next component to install are the diodes. Uh, there's a number of different types of diodes um, that are used. All of them are fitted exactly the same way, except the LEDs. Um, and these are basically installed the same way as a resistor would be, uh, bending the legs, pop them through the holes, and solder them through. The only thing to keep in mind, of course, with diodes um, is that they are uh, polarized, meaning they only go in one way. Um, there is a small uh, grey bar or line running around the end of the diode, uh, and that corresponds with uh, the bar or marking on the PCB. So do make sure that you get these in the right way, um, as putting them in the wrong way will cause all sorts of problems. Just to give an example of the way these should fit, um, you can see on this diode here that we have the grey bar on the right hand side and this aligns with the bar marking that you can just see on the right hand side on the PCB. So again we fit that in the same way and then solder up from behind.
Okay, after fitting all the normal diodes, the next job is to uh, install the LEDs. Now there are eight LEDs if you're installing a full kit. Um, one for each of the injector channels, one for each of the ignition channels. These are fairly straightforward to fit. Um, as with the regular diodes though, you do just need to be careful to make sure you get the polarity right. Um, with these, an LED, an LED such as this has two legs, uh, a long leg and a short leg, representing the anode and the cathode. Um, on the PCB, you'll note that the LED markings have one straight side and a rounded side. The short leg of the LED needs to go into the flat side on the board, like that. With the ignition LEDs, um, the markings are somewhat smaller on the board, um, so it can be a little bit more difficult to tell. If you are having trouble uh, with the board oriented this way, the short leg goes in the top hole. Or another way to look at it, the longer leg goes in the square tinned hole on the board. Okay, the next components to go onto the board are the capacitors. Now these are a very straightforward, much like the uh, resistors that go on, with the exception of two uh, tantalum capacitors that are part of the uh, power circuit. These are polarized capacitors, meaning that they have to go in the correct way. Uh, now these two capacitors have um, markings on them that show which way is positive and which way is negative and they align um, with a line that's on the board um, showing which way is positive and which way is negative. Um, here's a picture of those to show you which way around they need to be oriented. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put all these capacitors on. I'm going to start with the two tantalum ones to make sure I get them in the right way first. Uh, and then I'll go on and do the ceramic capacitors, um, which you can just place on much like you would the resistors. component to go in are the uh, pins connecting to the Arduino. So the simplest way to do this is take your board uh, out of your mounting, whatever you're using to hold it, and instead put the Arduino in. Now in this case I'm using an Arduino Dew, but it's the same form factor as for an Arduino Mega. What I've done is I've taken the break-off pins again, and I've broken them into sections that fit in each of the um, pin holders on the Arduino. Uh, now the last lot is here, I'll break this off for those. Line the pins up to see how many you need, or just count them out. Break them off. And insert them in. Now, the tricky part is we then take our board, we lay it over the top of the pins, and push them through the holes. Now, this can be a little bit fiddly to try and get them all aligning and popping through the holes. Um, 
You do need to give it a little bit of a wobble sometimes. Uh, occasionally you'll have one or more slightly bent pins. Uh, in this case, that's just popped through for me. So that's worked fairly simply. That will hold itself in place. And we can then go around all of these pins and solder them in. Um, simply work your way around starting in each corner. Now the first time you do this it will be um, very very tight. Just slowly work your way around and it will begin to loosen up. Try not to force it too much. You will need a little bit of pressure. Um, some corners will be tighter than others. That's normal. Just slowly work your way around. This does get easier when you remove it in the future. Um, not that you should be doing it too often, um, but as you just slowly work your way around, I've got one stuck corner here that you can see, just work away at that, and eventually your Arduino will come apart. And you've got your board with uh, nicely lined pins on it. With your board back in the board holder, or whatever you're using, uh, the next component to go in uh, the IC sockets. Uh, now these are for the two ignition drivers, one and two. Uh, there is a third one in the kit included um, for the VR board if you want. I've tended not to install that recently um, as some of the pins uh, do have some difficulty getting into the um, IC holders so I tend to just put my VR boards directly on there. Uh, the only thing to watch for here is these have a small notch in them uh, indicating which way around the IC needs to go. That aligns with a marking on the board that you can see there. So I'll put these in. Again, I'm going to use the trick of putting some of this on to hold them in place. board over and solder them in. The next component to go on are screw terminals. Um, now today I'm going to be using pluggable terminals as I think they make life a little bit easier. These are a two part thing. Um, one part gets soldered onto the board, the other part is where the wires actually screw into and these two can plug together to connect. Um, this makes life a little bit simpler in the car itself. Uh, I'll be using two position ones along here and two seven position ones along this side. Alternatively, you can use the old standard one piece screw terminal. They are a little bit more compact if space is an issue for you. So I'm going to go through and solder those on. With the connectors installed, the next thing to pop in are the MOSFETs. These are relatively straightforward, and the only thing to watch for here is the alignment. You'll notice that these have a, uh, a tab on the top of them. Now it aligns uh, with the line marking on the board. So in this case, the tab should go to the outside of the board. Standing up straight. Again, bend the pins at the back. and solder from behind. The MOSFET's installed. The next item to install is the power regulator, uh, or the LDO. Uh, this installs very much the same as the MOSFETs. Um, again, it has a tab on the back which lines up with um, the row on the board. Again, looks through And the pins. With the power regulator installed, we can install the varistor up next. Um, this is just a specialized type of uh, resistor, so it's not polarized, it can go in either way. 
that goes into the space labeled U2 on the board. The final component to install before we're finished is the map sensor. It installs over here and it mounts with this hole that's in the unit, only one side has the hole, with the hole facing upwards. To install it, if you have a look at the pins, you'll see that there is a, a thick portion nearer to the body and a thinner portion towards the end. Where it changes from thick to thin, we want to bend the pins there, just shy of 90 degrees. So we'll angle them downwards at the correct spot. And they will drop into the holes onto the board. Now to hold in place while we solder, I usually like to put the bolts through on the map sensor at this point. Now they're M4 bolts and M4 nuts. Simply drop through and just pop the nut on the bottom just to hold it in loosely. Just finger tight is fine for now. With those in place, what you can do is, assuming you've got your pins through the holes on the board, if they're not quite aligned, you can use a small screwdriver just to gently nudge those pins into place. One of those was just slightly bent there. And once you've got them all in their holes, you can just ease them down a little bit to give you a little bit more access to solder them from the back. Finally, just flip them over and solder in place.